Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Lewis Harding Investor and welcome back to my YouTube channel where in today's video I'm going to be going through my investment portfolio as at the end of May 2021. If you're new around here, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like and a comment on the video. Without a further ado, let's get straight into it. This is not a recommendation. This video should be seen as a source of information and education only. Please seek a regulated financial advisor if you are unsure of any investment. <music> As always with these updates, I like to go through my target allocation and portfolio details for anyone new watching. Um, yes, yeah, so the portfolio started on the 1st of May 2020 um, and my benchmark is the FTSE All World Index. Um, I'm currently trailing the World Index by quite a bit. So my current performance is 28.3%, whereas the uh, FTSE All World is like 45% plus. Uh, so I'm not doing too well to be fair compared to my benchmark, but it's a long term process um, and I'll go on to why I've lost a bit of money this month, um, which is quite juicy to be fair. Um, so yeah, alongside that I've got my target allocation and this is what I want my portfolio to look like. Um, at times it won't look like this uh, for many reasons such as assets going a lot higher than I want them to be, uh, such as equity crowdfunding um, and Bitcoin at times. Um, but ultimately this is what I want my portfolio to look like uh, going into the future. So I hope that makes sense. Any questions, as always, you can just send me an email or send me a message on social media. So yeah, now onto my portfolio performance. So as you can see, my performance compared to last month's update, um, it's my actual gains have gone down. This is mainly due to Bitcoin um, and other cryptos prices collapsing over the past month or so. Um, so a lot of my gains have been wiped out from Bitcoin, but I'm still up a good 500 odd percent, so I can't complain too much. Um, it's a very volatile asset class, and I'm just holding it for the long term to see what happens. Uh, for various reasons. Um, yeah, I'll get into why Forex trading is no longer a part of my strategy. Um, after last month, I said it was. Um, it's very juicy and I will get into it in some good depth after this. Um, but yeah, look at it, equities, my individual stocks, um, the performance has gone down a little bit from last month, it's what it is from time to time. Uh, emerging markets are still down. Uh, I think that makes up emerging markets index and Vanguard. And from um, the Chinese index as well, because I think the index, India index is actually up, so yeah, who knows where. Um, and then yeah, so that's basically from the performance, not too exciting. Um, so yeah, let's get to the juicy bits um, of why Forex trading is no longer part of my portfolio. So why is Forex trading no longer part of my portfolio? So ultimately I have to say I've made a massive mistake uh, by investing in this Forex trading um, capital management fund by IntroFX in Hull. Um, Basically, within six weeks, the fund was down 22%. Um, and for me, that, that was enough. Enough is enough. Um, I didn't think the people, the guys over there, were taking it seriously enough. Um, there wasn't good enough communication for the investors. And what they were showing their results on Instagram compared to what actual results were happening were very different. Like they were saying their results were doing really well, um, whereas the result where the fund wasn't. I don't like that. I don't like it when people are transparent and the communication was really bad. There's only a couple of messages um, explaining why they had drawdown, but it didn't explain why they were getting results from other places. It was like they trade their own personal accounts, um, but then they didn't really take into consideration the actual fund. So it's like they weren't taking certain trades on the fund, which would mean they would, would have taken profit. So I, you know, I got called fate. I wasn't very happy with it. And I just felt felt like I didn't have much control, um, and with little communication, and I didn't think they were taking it seriously enough. I decided to divest and take my money out. So yeah, I lost twenty two percent on that, um, which came up to about four hundred and fifty quid. So obviously a bit of a bummer, not great, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, these things happen. We all do make mistakes, and I'll openly admit this was a massive mistake from my part. Um, yeah, and you just go again, don't you? So I've decided to pull the money out. So eventually I put £2,000 in um, and I took like 1560 or something like that. Um, and then essentially what I did was um, a thousand pounds of that came out of some other savings. So I withdrew that from the portfolio completely. Uh, so that's why it's gone down a little bit from last month. Um, and then the other 450 no, sorry, 550 has gone straight back into my free trade account to be invested in stocks. So yeah, that's basically it. I didn't think the people were taking it seriously enough um, and that's not good enough in my opinion. Totally unprofessional. Um, the fund was down 22% when I 
took my money out. Uh, other investors were down 30% plus. So I got lucky with it. Made a mistake. It is what it is. We move on. So let's get on to some more updates on a brighter note. So yeah, some updates from my part. So I've updated my target allocation based on this. So Forex trading is gone completely for good. Um, and I've been doing some work in terms of what assets I really do want to be invested in. Um, I'm currently researching about Ethereum. Um, this is the second biggest crypto behind Bitcoin. Um, it's a very completely different type of crypto to Bitcoin, but I've do, been doing my research. And when it gets to a price I'm happy with, um, I'm going to go ahead and buy some and have a 2% allocation to this um, second crypto. And from there, um, I've also increased what I'd like to have in equity crowdfunding. So I'm calling this private equity. Um, it's essentially the same thing. Um, private equity is obviously on a bigger scale, but in my terms, private equity is private equity. Um, and it makes sense um, in my eyes anyway. So yeah, I'm going to increase this allocation. Um, I've been looking, I've been doing some research into Dave Swenson, who was one of the he actually managed the Yale Endowment. So basically the Yale University in the US, they have a lot of assets under management. And basically he managed them and he managed to get a return of 12% a year. And I've been looking into what he did and what changes he made. And when he got started investing in that portfolio and he had a lot in private equity. And I think it is something I'm really, really enjoying investing in. And it is ultimately, it does produce better returns in the stock market. But I wouldn't want all money in it, so that's why I'm going to give it a 20% allocation. Um, yeah, that's pretty simple as. So you'll see Ethereum's on there, 2%, Bitcoin 4, Gold 4. So that makes up 10% in precious metal slash crypto, um, which I think is a, a decent allocation. Uh, private equity will make up 20%. And then as well as that, emerging markets indexes will make up 20%. Individual stocks, 30%. So I've decreased this essentially um, and then i've also got 20 percent in the in the world index which i'm looking at changing potentially to small cap so instead of being a FTSE a world index for for full world stock market i'm looking at small cap index for a world index for small cap stocks so this is stocks with a market cap below 2 billion um, i'm currently doing research on the returns of small cap stocks versus large cap stocks and yeah, it's looking quite interesting and it's something going into small cap stocks. I don't, I personally don't want to buy individual small cap stocks, but an index of them is very interesting to me. Um, so yeah, you'll also see that I have made a few additions this, this month. Um, I have bought Deliver Me, which is the equity from equity crowdfunding, so an extra private equity investment. Uh, this was through Crowdcube once again, um, a favorite crowdfunding platform. Um, and yeah, the guys over at Deli Deliver Me are doing some really cool things. Um, so the directors, uh, the main director, Zach Lloyd, he's a really cool guy. He's done a lot of stuff for his age and built businesses. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with his product. And then they've got other people in the marketing space who are looking after him. So it's a good blend of people who have been there and done that, built businesses. Um, so if his product can get off the ground and does well um, I think it'll be a success successful investment anyway um, but yeah the last stock um, yeah Equinor was the next one next edition so the Norwegian oil giant uh, majority owned by the Nor Norwegian state this company is an interesting one because I never really thought I would want to buy an oil company uh, but this company's fundamentals are very decent and we've got a lot of good things going for them uh, they can produce oil for $30 a barrel um, which is a very low amount in the world when you exit mobiles and shells have to do it for $60. Um, so yeah, they're onto an absolute winner. They've been making a lot of money for years. Um, and as much as people in the renewable space will say, oil is very, very important to the economy. Um, it's only increasing year on year and oil's going to be around for another 40 years, 40, 50 years or so. So in terms of my investment thesis, Oil's not going anywhere um, for the time being until we get replacement for it and there'll be a demand for it. And if Equinor can produce oil for very, very easily for a, a low amount of cost per barrel, it's a winner winner investment wise. So yeah, that's one reason I've diversified into that space. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on my additions for the month. Uh, just let me know in the comments below. So there we have it. That's it for this month. Uh, that's all my updates. If you want to find out more, just head over to my website, lewishardinginvest.com. 
And if you want to learn more about investing, please subscribe to my monthly, well, not monthly actually, weekly newsletter for Harding Herald. Um, I talk about all things investing and it's just what my, what, what I'd like to speak about for the week. Um, I'm going to be getting a paid, um, setting up a paid thing on the Substack as well soon. So some paid content for anyone who would like that. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe to the Harding Herald. The link is in the description below. Well, yeah, thank you very much for watching today's video. If you really enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment as it does wonders for the YouTube algorithm. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.